among the, the many things that I'm looking forward to in a post-pandemic world, going back to an ATM machine is not one of them. And, and I think for a long period of time, people have talked about the death of cash. And, and you know, we've really reached, I believe, an inflection point over the last year where you're seeing a sharp acceleration there. Now, you take a market like Asia as an example. 40%, 40% of in-store payments are done with a digital wallet. And fundamental to our outlook over the next five years is this belief in the, the primacy or the ascendancy of the digital wallet. And so you take a, a market like the US, that same 40% number in Asia is less than 10% in the US. And so, you know, outside of the, you know, maybe the tactile benefit of holding a, a crisp $20 bill, there's not a single thing about physical cash that is better than a digital wallet. And so we, we fundamentally believe that uh, we're seeing a shift uh, in consumer behavior towards it, toward gravitating towards these uh, digital wallets. And I suppose because of the, the different nature of the United States, that process does take time. So you're looking at it from the respect of this is going to be something that's perhaps over the next one to three, or even if it is something that's over the next five to 10 years, you're still going to be able to capitalize on that. I think so. And look, I think any fundamental shift in consumer trends is going to take some time to play out. I think a lot of our investors want it to happen right now, but this is this is a journey where the success will be measured in years, whether that's three years or five years or seven years. I think it remains to be seen. But I think very important into that is we're not just sitting back and being a recipient of these trends. We're investing into them to help shape this outcome. Last year, we added more new product experiences than any year in our history. And we're keeping that pace as we look at the next five years to build out those capabilities in the digital wallet that allow someone to use us in many more ways than just being a simple payment button on a website. In terms of the demographics, when you, you look at Southeast Asia and you see that there's this incredible potential there, especially when it comes to fintech, it's a, a core focus of a lot of startup scene when it does come to Southeast Asia in particular, is there any concern that if you don't run into there fast enough, it's going to be a situation where you, you lose that advantage? Or are you more geared towards ensuring that every step that you're taking in terms of this growth strategy is more measured and calculated in a sense? Yeah, well, we've been pretty targeted in some of the, the markets that we're, we're looking at, but you're exactly right. Like, we're not competing in uh, a static uh, environment. This is dynamic and competition comes from every form and speed to market matters, but, but without sacrificing some of the key things that have made us so successful. But when you step back and you think about what we provide, whether it's to consumers or merchants, the scale that we have, the technology that we have, the experiences that we have, the, the, the trust and security, we believe that we can compete effectively in any of these markets around the world. 